It is estimated that one million pangolins have been trafficked over the past 10 years. Every year, tens of thousands of pangolins are killed for their scales, which are used in traditional Chinese medicine, and also for their meat, which some see as a delicacy. For years, the poaching of pangolins was centered in Asia until pangolins became listed as critically endangered species and the illegal trade of pangolins between Africa and Asia began. I'm Leila Johnson Salami, and today we're going to be taking a look at closer efforts to save the pangolins in Nigeria. The first stop today is Greenfinger's Wildlife Conservation Initiative in Shongotedo, Lagos State. The organization has a sanctuary for pangolins and other wildlife animals. I've come to meet the founder, Chinedu Mugbo, to find out more about the poaching of pangolins. So here we do have quite a different number, about 50 different animal species here, um, which also includes the pangolins. Um, now, all these animals actually have been rescued from the um, wildlife trade, um, wet markets, um, wildlife markets, traditional markets. Animals are used everywhere, and these pangolins especially, you find them everywhere, as food, as traditional medicine, and sometimes even in the international wildlife um, trade. Nigerian animals are almost out if we, if we don't wake up to do something about it. So what we've actually discovered um, in time that is that this, these pangolins now have become very, very relevant for, for the international trade. We've been to the market, we saw the pangolin actually being scaled, there, as in descaled, where they put them in boiling water and um, use a knife and just basically cut off their, um, the scales of them and they keep the scales for these um, international um, marketers. There are eight pangolin species in the world, four in Asia and four in Africa. All four in Asia are listed as critically endangered and all four in Africa are listed as either endangered or vulnerable, both by the International Union Conservation of Nature. Chinadu and I decided to head to Oluo Fish Market, a wet market where several wildlife animals, including pangolins, are sold. Unfortunately, we were stopped from filming inside Oluo Fish Market, so we had to use a hidden pocket camera for this part of the report. So Chinadu and I are now outside the Oluo Fish Market, a wet market selling animals both dead and alive. As we know, there is a huge risk of transmission of new infections from animals to humans, in fact, researchers in Guangzhou, China, and scientists as well, found 99% of similarities in viruses isolated from pangolins and COVID-19. Well, the plan today is to head in and see if there are any pangolins that we can rescue. Although there was no formal confirmation on this study, the World Health Organization recently released its long-anticipated report on the origins of COVID-19. The report concluded that it was very likely that the virus was introduced from bats to humans through an intermediate host, and pangolins were listed as a possible host. The, the bushmeat trade right now in Nigeria is only catering only catered for the middle class and the upper class people, because these animals are, they sell, well, they sell these animals so high that a poor person will not, will definitely go for cheaper options, like I'd rather go maybe eat fish than even eat meat. It's not to cater to them. From pangolins to snakes to monkeys, all sorts of animals were being sold. And it's not a poorer population buying these animals. It's wealthier customers who can afford to pay tens of thousands of naira. Every week I sell more than 30 pieces. More than 30 pieces? Yeah. Wow. You know, I sell like 50 pieces. So who is your usual customer? It's Chinese people. Chinese people? Yes. That's your main customer? Yes. So now how much are you going to sell all these pangolins to me for today? This one, one, forty thousand. Forty thousand. Ah? Yes. Are you aware that most of these pangolins, as they are buying them from you, yeah. they are sending them to Asia? I don't know. Mm. But I wanted to also ask you: Are you also aware this same pangolin that we keep on hunting? You know that very, very soon it's not going to exist anymore. No, it's down it's now. The sellers aren't the bad people here. They see this as an opportunity to feed their families and genuinely do not understand what could possibly be wrong. Unfortunately, without the enforcement of laws against the illegal trade, sellers will continue to sell. I just bought three pangolins to save them from the trade. We decided to take the pangolins to St. Mark's Animal Hospital for treatment, where Dr. Mark works around the clock to rescue and shelter animals. 
Hello. Lovely to meet you. Good How are you doing? Okay. How are you? What do we have? Oh my goodness. We brought you some pangolins, pangolins that yeah. we um, rescued from the train I today. Wish. I recognize the sack. Because yeah. this is how they are transported, this is how they get to the bush meat, the wet market, and this is how they moved around. Now, this is very stressful for the animal, apart from the limited air and all that. This is, they're it's not, not used to it, yes, they're not used to it, and then it's a whole strange world. So, the animal here now is already very stressed oh, no. when you receive them. So, what we do is when we get them, we evaluate their state of health. There are some that we would have to keep. The ones that we see that are in good body condition, alert and everything, we release almost immediately. But if they are not, we would have to take them in and rehabilitate them before we make our release. So I'm going to sedate him now and then take my parameters. Unfortunately, the three pangolins were quite traumatized and needed time to recover. However, Dr. Mark did have a pangolin who was fully treated and ready for rehabilitation in Lufasi Park, where he recently set up a pangolin rehabilitation center in collaboration with the park. We don't have data for what's going on in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we can't even tell that, okay, this is what is left. This is the rate at which it is going. But I can assure you the rate at which these animals have been removed from nature is alarming. We need to do something. We need to all come out and play our different roles to ensure that these animals don't go extinct in our time. What we're doing to nature, we're already seeing the reaction. 2020 was not a normal year at all, at all. We're already seeing nature reacting to humanity's brigandage against her acts of terrorism against her, wiping out species like the pangolin, pushing species into extinction. And the reality is there has to be a reaction. Unfortunately, we're not really seeing that reality. We're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> we're not listening. Now, this center would also act as an educational center exactly. uh, for people, yes, for the government, yes, yes. for people, for visitors. Because people don't ask, what is a pangolin? Yes. A lot of Nigerians, I can boldly say, 95% of Nigerians do not know what a pangolin is. Exactly. So, the center is fulfilling the role of education, the role of rehabilitation. It's wonderful to have it. African pangolins are at risk of becoming critically endangered species. And if the illegal trade isn't stopped, they will be poached to extinction. Luckily, efforts to save the pangolins do exist as we've seen today, but it's so hard to keep up with the trade on such a large scale. Well, we've got a little juvenile here today that's ready to be released back into nature. Hi, Dr. Mark. Hello. So we are going to do just that. Hey. <laughs> Leila Johnson Salami, Arise News, Lagos.